Welcome back to Ina Bear Farm. We're gonna do some board work here today with the whiteboard. We are getting ready to start a new project. It's a, an agroforestry project. And so I thought we'd take a look at some design ideas that we have for this project, which I've already kind of sketched out on paper, but I thought it'd be cool to use the whiteboard to show you guys just how we kind of think through um, how we're gonna lay out a design like this. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into um, agroforestry, centropic agroforestry, all that. And um, there's tons of people you can learn from on the internet that are way better informed than I am. Um, great channels like um, Agroforestry Academy is a really good one. Uh, What's Ripening. And, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of other ones if you know of some really good ones, throw it in the comment section because I would love to check it out too. Um, mostly I learn by kind of seeing what other people are doing and then just experimenting on my own. And then of course I encourage everybody to do that as well because your region is going to be different than where everybody else is growing. But a lot of the concepts are the same and I'm not going to go too deep into those today because like I said, I'm not really teaching that so much as I just wanted to uh, have you kind of join along in this design experiment idea. But I will kind of talk about some of the fundamentals that go into a design. So first of all, let's talk about the site, which I'm gonna show you in later videos. And it is a sloped site that's roughly 200 feet by 100 feet. And so it's a decent size and it's got a little bit of a slope to it. It's not an extreme slope, but something you wanna take into account. Uh, we're on the Big Island of Hawaii, so we're looking at tropical climate, about a thousand feet elevation. And so the other piece is that we have kind of our focal crops, our long-term crops that we're wanting this area to be um, planted out with, that we want them to be the focus of. And for starters, the main one is ulu, or breadfruit tree. That's going to be like our main, main crop here. And then we have two kind of secondary fruit crops. One is soursop and one is longan or longan. And we're gonna intersperse those in our rows as well. And we've got a whole bunch of other secondary things that we'll be growing that are kind of part of the agroforestry process that you'll see as we start sketching out here. And so first of all, let's talk about the distance between our main fruit crop trees. So, Put a circle here and I'll mark it U for Ulu. That's the breadfruit. Okay. I'll write that up here. Okay. And first of all, the spacing between the Ulu trees themselves. Actually, I'm let me do this. The next row down is going to be an Ulu. So we'll put a U there. The spacing here. It's 25 feet. Okay. I apologize to all of my um, non-US viewers out there that I'm not converting that to meters. It's just not in my head. Uh, then we've also got 25 feet this way. And this is where we're going to throw in a sour sop. We'll do an S for sour sop. I'll write that here. All right, so as we continue that pattern, the next one down will be an ulu, and then down again will be L for longan. And then we'll swap these out on the subsequent rows. So that would be longan. This would be ulu again. Sour saw. So the ulus will kind of follow rows going up and down the hillside, but side to side they'll be staggered with the other fruit trees. Then what we're going to do is have kind of a, um, an inter row here in the middle. And so dead center we'll be putting cacao. So I'll put C for cacao. Put that up here. 
That's gonna come in way later when these fruit trees are much more mature and we have some shade, but we're also going to be adding some stuff to those rows that in the interim will put some shade up as well. Give it cacao. Cacao, like that. Then we're going to have some long-term nitrogen fixing trees with the cacao in the same row. So I'm just gonna put in F for nitrogen fixer. And these are trees that I'm going to let them get pretty big. And that will add some shade protection for the cacao in the short term. And it's also gonna be a scaffolding because we're gonna be planting some black pepper crops under there and as well as some vanilla orchids which both like a shadier environment. I didn't mention this, but right now this is all pasture grass. And so we have a pretty decent supply of very hardy, very robust guinea grass. It's got a lot of silica and uh, it's a lot of carbon to start with for these materials. So I don't really need to be like planting grasses or anything like that. Uh, mixed in here, we're also gonna be doing some papaya. We'll do P for papaya. You can kind of see how those get staggered in there. And then up in our top rows here, we're going to do a more of a shorter term nitrogen fixing trees. Now these are going to get pruned and used to mulch the fruit trees. So these are not going to be around for all that long, maybe a couple years before they, we really start to prune them back on a consistent basis and feed them to our ulu, feed them to our soursop and our lungan. Um, and then mix in those rows, losing my spot here, here we go. I'm gonna put a B for banana, which Likely we will not use as a fruit crop, but just a biomass accumulator, some shade. So we'll be constantly cutting those down, feeding them to the fruit trees. And so you can imagine 25 feet here, and then this would be a repeat of this pattern up here. So you can imagine 25 feet this way, 25 feet this way, it gives quite a bit of space for the drip line of these fruit trees to reach out. And we're gonna keep them height topped, at a, you know, relatively accessible height. And that will also promote that outward growth as well. So it'll really fill in this space over time. The papayas will kind of drop back, the nitrogen fixers, the cacao will kind of be hidden there in the understory. So, you can really see how, or if you think four-dimensionally, you can see how over time, this will really start to fill in and there's this succession. And in the meantime, we will be getting papaya out of this a little bit earlier. And I'm not, I haven't decided if I want to put in other crops that I'm gonna be taking out of this because I actually kind of have my hands full managing things like bananas and pineapples and cassava and stuff on the rest of the farm. And so I don't know if I want to add like other crop extraction stuff to this and I don't really need to. So I'm sort of thinking this is gonna be a system that is just a lot of biomass accumulation, a lot of nitrogen fixing, a lot of that kind of stuff. Papaya would be one example though of an earlier crop that we'll be pulling out. And then lastly, and I'll use a different color uh, to note this. What I wanna do is throw in Hopefully that's showing up okay. Kind of an alternate inter row, and those would be Mexican sunflower. So let's see, I'll put, um, I'll just write in the red over that MS for Mexican sunflower or Tithonia. I want to do entire rows of that. Like I mentioned before, it's just the guinea grass right now but I actually want to add the Tithonia because I really like the, the leaf litter that you get from that, the, the biomass uh, accumulation, 
the nitrogen that you can be adding to your fruit trees as a mulch. And I find that it's just a little bit easier to maintain than the grass. So, and we've got a lot of it. And so what I'm thinking about doing is having these rows and then we'll go through and just prune them all at the same time. So it'll be pretty easy to prune and just lump them over to the fruit trees when we do that. And since they'll be interspersed, like each row will go with, you know, the fruit tree row above it or something like that. And then eventually these will start to get shaded out. We'll cut them back. We won't really need them anymore. And this will be a little bit more of like an open alley space. And as we, over time, fill in with more shade, we may come back to turmeric, something like that. And, you know, these are all the kind of the more um, substantial, like, um, plantings, the very intentional, but, as with a lot of other um, agroforestry systems, we're going to be seed planting a lot of stuff intermixed with all of this. A lot of smaller nitrogen fixers like jack bean. We've also got pigeon pea. We're gonna be putting a ton of pigeon pea in here. And pigeon pea is actually what's going to initially give us some shade around our young fruit trees. Some of these fruit trees will come in as seedlings like the ulu, but the soursop, the longan, I think I'm gonna experiment with um, trying to get them to go from seed right in the ground. So again, we need that shade, that protection, especially because when we come into summer, it's just gonna be super intense sun. We're gonna be running irrigation lines um, all the way through here. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna irrigate the Mexican sunflower or not. I may just leave it to kind of fend for itself because I've noticed that here, Without irrigation, it doesn't die. It just sort of stops growing, but it might be worth it to me to not have to like use all the extra water. I'm kind of playing around with that idea. So if you have any thoughts on that, let me know. Um, and then again, I may add other food crops in here, just depending, you know, sometimes when I get out on the site, I sort of have a feeling of like, oh, I could fit this in or this would do really well here. But as far as, you know, the on paper design, this is um, what we're thinking about for right now. And so our next big step after the design is to come in and start laying out measurements of where we want these anchor trees, the ulu, the soursop, the longhan, and the cacaos, because that sort of designates where everything else is gonna go. And once we have those measurements taken out, we can start kind of clearing some space, getting the pigeon pea seeds in, getting some stuff besides the grass up and going, getting nitrogen fixers. We'll be using like ice cream bean, gliracidia, um, cespania maybe, cespania cespins. Um, and I don't know, I may throw in one or two other things, maybe some caliandra or something like that, but Primarily, I think ice cream bean and Glare City, those have been the two biggest winners for us in our area. So I think, uh, and I've got plenty of seed for those. So um, I think we'll be going with that. And we'll then down on this row, same thing, we'll put in the nitrogen fixers. We'll also go ahead and seed that papaya and get that going because why not? It likes a lot of sun, it's a fast grower. So let's go ahead and get that and get a crop out of that. And then we'll be getting those um, banana cakey uh, or, or pups, as a lot of people call them. Uh, we'll get those in the ground as well because they're, again, fast growers. We want that biomass. We want that shade. So, you know, these systems, they're not cookie cutter. They're not universal. It's not one size fits all. Like you, it's going to look different every site that you're on. This is what we're going to try for our site. But, you know, if you notice anything or you have any thoughts of like, hey, I think this would really work or you have any questions about why we're doing something a certain way, um, let me know in the comments section. Spacing wise, I chose 25 feet because that is what is recommended on our island for spacing ulu trees and it's recommended by a very good source. So I decided to go with that spacing. I think it's you know, just something, a good place to start but it's possible depending on, you know, how you're gonna prune and maintain, you can squeeze these closer together, spread them further apart. Um, 
But we're excited to break ground on this. We're gonna have some more videos coming your way. They're gonna show those different parts of that process and we'll keep you updated. Hope this was interesting and informative and we'll see you back here soon at Ian Bear Farm. Aloha.